Let's add some custom loot to already existing loot tables. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to modify some loot tables. Now, this is actually a fairly straightforward process. Maybe some of you have seen the already existing global loot modifiers from Forge. And in Fabric, this is actually a little bit easier than it is in Forge. I know it's pretty crazy, but that is going to be the case. So in our util package, right click new Java class, and this is going to be the mod loot table modifiers. And inside of here, we simply need one method and two, well, fields. I am, however, going to copy over the entire class once again. Everything, of course, available for you in the description, in the GitHub repository, or in individual gists. And then we'll actually go through and I'll explain what this, what is happening here. First of all, let's go into our on initialize method and actually call the mod loot table modifiers that modify loot tables. So that this is called. And now we can actually go through and see what this means. So the first thing that we have is we actually want to add to the grass when we break the grass block we want our pepper seeds to drop as well and i have built something here for this so we need an identifier this is the basically the id the identifier for the grass block this is of course under the minecraft namespace and then this is under blocks slash grass so this is the loot table we're going to change if we once again go down here to net minecraft minecraft 117 and so on then we can see all of the loot tables right here for example for the blocks and we would be able to find the grass block here and when we see right here we actually see the chests here so once again the chests and then we have the igloo chest right here so those are the two loot tables that we are basically going to well change and you could in theory also change the ones for the entities or the gameplay as well or for other blocks that is all totally doable Right, so what is happening in the modify loot tables method? Well, we are basically calling the loot table loading callback event, right? So when the loot tables are basically being loaded up, whatever is in here, please execute this. And what we then see is this the actual grass loot table, right? So we're going to say if the actual grass ID is the same as the ID here. So this is being called for basically every loot table. Then we're going to say, okay, now add the pepper seed to the grass loot table. So this pool builder, right, this is a pretty crazy thing. The thing about it is that you will have to play around with this a little bit, right? So this builds pretty much exactly the same loot tables as we've seen previously. So for example, the pepper plant with these things, right? We can say, hey, how many rolls are there? You know, there's a conditional random chance loot modifier and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of things that you can add here. I once again, just definitely advise you to play around with this. You can middle mouse button click on the builder here, middle mouse button click on this, and then you can actually see, you know, what you can call there. This is a normal builder pattern. So with a little bit of Java knowledge, you might have heard about the builder pattern before. Pretty much the same thing that the, you know, in the blocks, the actual settings use, you know, that also you can call multiple methods there and you always get the builder returned. And this is pretty much exactly the same thing. So in this case right here, what's going to happen is that when we break a grass block, we have a 50% chance of this dropping. So I think that in testing, this was a little bit too much. So maybe I'll go to down to about 35%. You know, maybe you could change this, of course. The thing about it is that you can always tweak this. And then you can see that this is going to drop a pepper seed, of course. And it has a function. This is going to be a basically how many of those are going to drop. And here you can see it's basically always going to be one, right? I could also say, hey, let's do two. So the uniform loot number provider here, it's going to drop somewhere between one and two. Of course, it's going to be exactly one or two because you can't drop half a seed, of course, in this case. But yeah, that would be sort of what you do here. And the same thing goes to the igloo, basically. It's also pretty much exactly the same thing where we have a 75% chance of adding the dousing rod to the actual igloo structure chest. I am for testing purposes actually going to put this to one so it actually has a 100% chance of being in the chest simply because of the fact that I don't want to go around through 100 igloos and search again because sometimes you get unlucky. That's just how the cookie crumbles. And uh, yeah, that's actually all that we need to do. We don't need to add any JSON files. We don't need to add any other callbacks or any other classes. This is all that we need to do to basically add something to the already existing loot tables. So let's see if it works. All right, we find ourselves back in Minecraft. So let's see if I break some grass at some point. There it is. Two of the pepper seeds actually dropped. There, are one of them dropped and another one dropped. And that's actually how easy the, you know, modifications for the grasses or for block loot tables. 
And now let's see if we, when we find an igloo, if there is actually a dowsing rod in there. All right, so we find ourselves here at the igloo. So first of all, let's go into the, you know, undergrounds and let's see. So right there, the dowsing rod is in there, just like we've done. So this is actually how easy it is to, well, basically add stuff to different loot tables. Right at the end here, I wanted to mention once again that you just have to play around with this a little bit. This can be very complicated, as you can clearly tell, but overall, you should be able to figure this out fairly easily. Once again, with some Java knowledge, this should be fairly easy to figure out. But whatever the case may be, I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah!